eight traders it is Wednesday evening September 25th and it is time for my weekly video I post these videos to members real time and I post them a week after the fact on YouTube if you're watching this video on YouTube please go back and check see how well these stock trades did I think that you're going to be very impressed with the performance I am going to be posting daily videos through the rest of the year I try and get them out about 45 minutes after the open so make sure to subscribe to this channel you're gonna to get tons of actionable trades also if you like the content please give it a thumbs up post some comments and I'll try and reply to all the comments I possibly can if you want to take advantage of the software I'm showing you tonight option stalker is the place to go www.oneoption.com let's get started so market first market first market first everything I do starts with the market we had our last video right in this area right up here and it was pre FOMC I did the video Tuesday night we were getting the statement the next day Wednesday I had mentioned to everyone that I felt that the market was over, overly optimistic that they were going to be disappointed with the Fed's decision and sure enough they cut rates by a quarter of a point that was fine most Fed officials polled are not expecting another rate cut this year the market is pricing in another rate cut so what happened to the market well there was the news initially the market held up pretty well and it actually challenged resistance at the all-time high so we go up to the high one test two test three test nope and then we started to decline we also had quadruple witching which fueled this move on Friday if you look at the volume though don't be fooled by these volume spikes because these were related to quadruple witching and the FOMC statement apart from yesterday's volume that was the first decent volume we've seen in a very long time here you can see a bearish engulfing pattern it engulfs this bar right here but today we bounced so this was a horizontal support level that I had mentioned in my video last week that level was right around the 296.50 level right here we were not going to be taking any bearish trades unless we were able to penetrate that level after the FOMC FOMC is right here we penetrate so there were a couple of bearish trades for us to take but they didn't last long because the market bounced right back today and I also mentioned in last week's video that I felt that after the FOMC we would be testing this support level right here this horizontal support level ooh look at that it's exactly where we bounced today so just as expected and I also mentioned last week that we were not going to be buying at the all-time high we were going to be waiting for a dip I thought we might get one today we're going to be looking at long positions we're going to be looking for bullish trades I like this bounce here there's a bullish hammer off of a technical support level tested that breakout breakout held we've got the 100 day moving average not too far from it so there should be buyers in this area especially ahead of earnings season which starts in two weeks so let's take a look <clears throat> at last week's picks I'm going to remove this right here so that it's not in the way and then we'll start clicking through our picks Apple was a bullish pick in the event that the Fed was planning on easing again this year and that the market rallied after the FOMC statement the caveat to that was that the market needed to make a new all-time high which it did not so we would not have been trading Apple but you can see the stock held up quite well and I'm going to overlay the SPY you can see the big drop that we had look what Apple did it held its own that is relative strength that is our advantage and if I wanted to I could even go in and take it one step further enter Apple and now I'm going to overlay QQQ let's see what the Nasdaq did in that time frame whoa big drop big rotation out of tech stocks this week Apple holds up well I still like Apple so I think Apple is going to perform well and we're going to continue to look and the next one was CTL so Apple we would not have done a trade in but it actually looked pretty decent from a relative strength standpoint so here's where the video comes out holds the 200 day moving average 
Good relative strength. Let's put that indicator up. This is my relative strength indicator. If the orange line is above zero, it's strong relative to the market. So you can see it dipped a little bit today, but it's still quite decent. And this sets up for a nice bullish put spread. And here's how you set those up. We'll go right at that prior resistance level. You see that? Look at how well that lines up. And we've also got the 200-day moving average providing support. So what you would do is you would sell the $12.50 put. And then maybe by the $12 put, you would receive a credit for that. As long as that 200-day moving average holds, as long as this breakout holds, you stay in the position, let time decay work in your favor, distance yourself from the action. Market's not doing a whole lot of anything, and this stock looks like it wants to go higher. That's one trade that you can do right out of the gate this week. Didn't even have to look for it. It was already on the chart from last week. MOS, that would have been the first day that the SPY broke below our trigger point. Yes, you could have made some money on that. SHOP was another bearish pick from last week. I said we wanted to see it below the 100-day moving average. It was. Yesterday you had a chance to make money on it. This is a bullish engulf. And it has me slightly bullish on the stock because if you look at yesterday's price action, let me bring up the SPY real quick because this is going to dovetail into another topic. You see how the market sold off dramatically yesterday? Well, we popped this morning, but we didn't quite make it up to where the open was yesterday or the high of the day yesterday. So SHOP actually recovered quite well given that the market did not recover all of its losses. I'm going to scroll back and look at the price action from yesterday. It was pretty nasty throughout most of the day. So there's your open, sells off dramatically, bounces a little bit, but closes on its low of the day. We want to see stocks that were able to perform well relative to yesterday's high, and I'm going to use that in one of my search criteria. So I wanted to outline my rationale behind that trade. SHOP to me looks like it could be pretty decent. Look at this strength here today. It just kept grinding higher and higher. So here's what we would like to do for SHOP. We would like, there's a downtrend right here that's going to intersect right around that 320 level. You see it right there? So we want the stock above this 320 level, and then you can start considering selling out of the money bullish put spreads on this stock. It has been strong prior to this decline right here. This is not one of my favorite plays. I'm just trying to show you some bullish put credit spreads right now. I think the tech was sold hard and there are going to be some bounces in that sector. So from our perspective, we were looking to short this stock. Yes, it would have worked out really well. You should have covered that this morning, especially when we got halfway back up that red candle right there. Take your profits. In this market, you don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next. There's tweets all over the place. Next thing you know, you know Trump's going to get impeached, which just one word about that in my daily market comments. Almost every analyst was saying that the market sold off yesterday because of the Trump impeachment proceedings. Bunch of hogwash. The market sold off because it's addicted to easy money. It's addicted to credit. It had a temper tantrum when it found out that the Fed doesn't plan on easing rates anymore. That safety net is gone, and so the market is vulnerable. You've got stocks trading at a forward P.E. of 17. They're at the upper end of their valuation range, so they've got room to pull back. That's all that happened. It had nothing to do with impeachment. If impeachment was such a big deal, then why did the market rally today? Are they not going to impeach? Are they not going to proceed? Of course they are. It had nothing to do with impeachment. So they find a reason to explain everything when actually it has to do with interest rates in the Fed. It has to do with the delayed reaction to the Fed not cutting rates any longer this year. So we're going to continue to go down and we'll look at SHOP and that was one of our shorts. SPWR, this was one of our longs. You can see, I mean, we weren't supposed to take any long positions, so market didn't break out to a new high. I'm not even going to look at it. But it held up relatively well. 
win was one of our shorts. You can see here how yesterday it started to drop. Today it rebounded, but not quite enough. So all told, the stocks that we would have been long held up well, and there was a little bit of money to be made yesterday when the market dropped below that key 296 level. But when it got back up above it, you had to take your profits and get out of those trades. That's not much of a swing trading environment. Right now, we're just chopping back and forth, so I'm hoping that in the course of the next week, we might be able to grind, grind, grind a little bit higher. My suspicion is that, and I'm hoping, we get a little bit more of a market decline, maybe just down to this 100-day moving average for a little bit, just so that we can get some of these stocks lined up for earnings season. The closer we get to earnings season, I believe the stronger the market bid will be. And then we'll start to see some really nice opportunities. But it's just been chopping back and forth. So you have to be very, very nimble. Let's see what we can find. We're going to go into one of my favorite swing trading searches, Pop Bull. And we're just going to click through charts. Before I even do that, I'm going to mention to you, I'm looking for compressions. And I'm looking for horizontal breakouts through that compression. That's like a coiled spring that is ready to release. Once we get those releases on any decent kind of volume, we usually see some type of follow through. So this is nice. I like it. Let's overlay some uh, well, the moving averages here. We've got a 50-day moving average. We don't have a lot of data on this stock. I do like the big engulfing pattern here. doesn't have much volume. Nah. This stock wants to go, but you can see that's an inverted hammer right there, or a hangman, as some people would call it. Try to get through this breakout, and on a very bullish day, it was not able to. Good volume. So not the pattern I want to see. If it's going to break out, it's going to do it on a 16-point S&P rally, and it's going to have a big green bar with a close near the high. That I'd be much more interested in. This tells me resistance is probably still intact. Letter I. This is a nice little breakout right here. You can see quite a few tails on top. Decent volume, good relative strength. I like this one. This is actually a pretty decent stock. I wouldn't buy it right there. You can see how choppy it is. It tends to rally up and pull back, rally up and pull back. But I'm going to add that to our list. Pretty easy for me to do that. I'm going to use a feature called tag. I'm just going to click the plus sign and it'll add it to a list. So let's see what else we've got here. Don't like that. Nike, nice breakout. Opens higher, closes lower. Again, not the type of price action going into a five minute chart. It's not the kind of price action I want to see for a stock that just broke out, especially when the market's going higher. Let's overlay the SPY. You'll be able to see what I mean. SPY, up, 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 stock, flat. Mm, it did break out, though, so there's a chance for the stock to continue to move. We'll go back to the daily chart and see if we can find a game plan for this. Boy, if you can buy it anywhere around here, that would be great. I don't know that the stock will pull back there. It's got to get through that opening price for me to be interested in it. I'm going to drop an alert for my own sake right there. So if it can get through that level, it'll probably be a good buy. It just hasn't had a whole lot of momentum. We're going to zoom out. See, that's a longer term chart. Just chop, 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 chop. Oh, up, down, up, down. There's a range right there. There's a range right there. Every time it looks like it's going to break out. Here we go. Here we go. No. Here we go. No. So I'm not interested in Nike. I don't see enough in it to make me want to trade it, especially with that price action today. But I've got my alert out there. This stock is grinding higher, trying to break out here, but not seeing any momentum there. So not that interested in it. Not bad. Got the major moving averages here. Now here's a play for us, okay? I like this. Good relative strength, very important to us. Above the major moving averages, you can see how the stock came back in a very, very weak market. It was able to hold that 100-day moving average. 
I don't know what kind of premiums you can get on that 92 put, but if you could sell the 92.90 or 92.91 bullish put spread, that's a good do. You've also got the 200-day moving average right here, so that's pretty nice. I like this for a bullish put, put spread. Symbol APH. Make sure that the short strike price is below technical support. The reason for that is that we want to make sure that the spread stays out of the money. If that technical support is breached, then we buy back the spread. We were wrong. Move on. That's how it works. LRCX. I like this. This is a really big bullish engulfing pattern right here. You can see how it engulfs many days. I think this stock could go higher. Good relative strength. Really decent volume. That's going to go on the long list. And we want to see it above this resistance right here. And that will be our stop. Very easy trade to ma manage. Here's a nice stock that got through this resistance level. I uh, don't know that I would use it for a bullish put spread because it's still got this resistance level right here. And we've recently come off of a big dip. So not my favorite for that. This Probably doesn't have a lot of premium in it because it is a paper company, Louisiana Pacific. But here's an example, just visually, if I see something like this, compression above major support, that yells out to me, bullish put spread, bullish put spread. You'd sell it at the 2450 strike price, collect the premium, really nice relative strength. So I like this one, and I like it breaking through this little horizontal resistance level, and I like the full head of steam that it has. So I'm just going to put it on the list. It's not a big mover. That paper stocks move very, very slowly. So uh, not a very exciting stock. I'd rather have a tech stock that has a chance to really move. But these are all good-looking stocks, and they're right off a of pop bowl. This is the best swing trading search you can have. And oftentimes, that's all I need when I do my weekly videos is to just go through and look at all of the different pop bull searches. So we've got a few. Uh, nothing too exciting. The market hasn't been too, too exciting. So let's go into custom search and see if we can add to this list. So I'd mentioned the prior day high. So yesterday... The SPY opened on its high, closed on its low. And imagine a stock following the market and selling off. But today, it was able to get through its high of the day from yesterday, even though the market wasn't able to do that. Well, that's of interest to me. That tells me that the stock does have some relative strength to it. I hope all of you are following that. I'll try and show you an example. Option liquidity, we always like to have good option liquidity. So we're going to, that's a pretty decent list, and we're going to see if we can whittle away at that. ATVI we're going to take a look at, and uh, so here's an example. That would be just like the market here. It opens on its high, closes near its low, but today the market can't get back above that opening high, but this stock did, and it did something else. It broke through this downtrend line. So this is a bull flag. There's your flagpole. There's your flag. It comes back. It tests this gap right here. It fills in the gap, and now it's going higher. ATVI definitely makes the list. I like it. And I think there's also a put selling opportunity, and you would key off of that high right there, that closing price of 53.50. That would be my short strike price. And then you'd buy maybe the $50 put or the $52.50, whatever your risk tolerance is. But you would use that. A close below this is your stop. You want that stock to stay above $53 for sure. You could even go $50, uh, excuse me, $53 strike, $52.50 strike. But it's got nice relative strength, filled in the gap like it was supposed to, really had a nice uh, run today. Finished near its high of the day. So I like ATVI. 
Boeing looked really good this morning. It came up on a heavy volume search, and it had good relative strength even when the market sold off. So it wants to break out. I like it if it can get through that 388 level. Put it on here. We're going to zoom out. See what it's doing on a longer term basis. It's been struggling. It's got some more resistance right up there. Another resistance point right there. So this may not be our best pick. Just zooming out and looking at this. Uh, it's got pretty heavy lifting to do to get through this level. So that zoom out helped me. I'm not going to be trading it. I'm not going to put it on the list. We're going to click the zero magnifying glass here to go back to the regular view. You can see how Boeing's been very choppy. Very, very newsy stock right now because it's going through a lot of issues with its 737. So I'm just going to keep going down the list. If I see something I like, I'm going to let you know. No interest. No interest because of overhead resistance. No interest. Too choppy. Uh, no interest there. Nope. This could be interesting. GLW. You can see the big gap down right in here. The stock is relatively weak. Has a nice day today. It's trying to get in this gap. If it can get in the gap, it should at least fill to this 50-day moving average at 29.20. So this is not bad. You've also got a little bit of an uptrend line that's being established right here. So there may be a put selling opportunity on this as well at the 2750 strike price right below here. And with the market moving sideways, we're okay generating income while everything's moving sideways. This is Google, heavy resistance up here, trying to break out. I would like to see it above that opening right there. Excuse me, that closing. See how it opened here and closed here. I'd like to see it above that level before I trade it. But Google's held up pretty well. I'm going to add it to the to the uh, list because we're just trying to gather names right now. This is a nice bullish put spread. Tails under body, tail under body, tail under body. That tells me that there is buying right here at this 50-day moving average. See how it's hugging it? I think you could sell a bullish put spread at the 141 strike on IBM. You can go near term with some weeklies. Stock has pretty decent relative strength. You can see how yesterday when the market really sold off, it held up really well. Barely tested that 50-day moving average and then today was able to take out that prior day high. That's why that's one of our searches today. Really nice getting a little bit ahead of itself. Earnings today, uh, yesterday after the close, really good day today. Getting a little parabolic. So I don't like when stocks have that kind of look and feel to it, I need a pullback. I can't join that rally. You're either in it early and you stay in it, or you have to wait for a pullback. Here we've got nice bullish engulfing pattern, but no interest below these major moving averages. This is pretty nice breakout here. Good gap higher today. Big volume. Good relative strength. Zoom out. See what else we got here. Not bad. Uh, it's still got some upside resistance right in here, but it's starting. This is a nice double bottom in here. So um, if it pulls back at all, it would set up a nice opportunity for a bullish put spread right on that 200 day moving average. Use that 57 strike. And the intent here is that it maintains that breakout. But right here, um, it looks pretty good, I must admit, but probably not given the longer term chart that we brought up. Nike, we looked at. NVIDIA, I'm not seeing anything too exciting there. We got a breakout here. That's nice. It's just trying to get back to that breakout. Kind of choppy all over the place. Uh, gets in, fills the gap, backs off. Not interested in that. To choppy. Here we've got a really nice breakout, really big momentum, pulls back, 
finding support I do kind of like this stock and we can see how it's been able to move higher and it got through yesterday's high with ease so this is not a bad candidate we would want to see this stock STX above that 5350 level right there we want it to take out that high from Monday and if it can then there's a good chance it'll continue to grind higher if it can't it may just drift back down again so STX I'm gonna put on the list I don't know that it's ready to buy right now nothing there nothing there nothing there and this is US Steel uh, nothing really there either wouldn't really even want to do a bullish put spread here even though that's support it's just the stock has been just too weak so not overly interested in that gonna go in and see if we can start generating anything off of another search here and uh, one criteria that I could have used in addition to option liquidity and stock greater than prior day high is I should have gone in and looked for relative strength that would have narrowed my list down considerably it could have added another time frame for that and narrowed it even further and ATVI still would have come up and MPC would have still come up STX so some of our primary ones that we like would have still shown up so I'm going to go in and I'm going to I'll just clear the upper It'd be easier for me to do that you can clear the upper area and you can clear the lower area just by clicking these I can also save these searches as well and then they'll appear in my search so once I have something configured that I really like click save name it describe it name it. Uh, there's a bullish or bearish selection determine which side it is if it's bullish it'll end up in the bullish list if it's bearish it'll be in the bearish list very easy to use and then you'll have it whenever you want it so these are some of my searches right in here so I can just click on them and boom we're right into that search so what I wanted to show you was a search that allows me to go in and look for stocks that are going to be posting earnings in the next two weeks I call this pre earnings bull I'm going to market and I'm gonna run it and I also have option liquidity marked with a rating of better than three so here's the deal on these I've gone back over the last 12 quarters and I've analyzed each one of these stocks and I've determined that two weeks ahead of the earnings announcement date the stock has a tendency to rally 75 percent or more of the time so this is very valuable information and it sets up particularly well for selling out of the money bullish put spreads on companies that are about to announce so as earnings season gets closer and closer the search will be better and better so we've got BBBY and in this particular case you can see how the stocks got a little bit of relative weakness I'm not overly concerned about that but I wish it would have had a better day today because it really did not bounce or rally at all today so we're not in any hurry we know that the company is going to be announcing if it can get through this little resistance level right here at about ten dollars and twenty cents then for sure we would want to try and sell a bullish put spread around that 50-day moving average I think that's about a nine dollar and fifty cent strike actually it's nine thirty but I would probably do the nine dollar and fifty cent strike for all of these plays we're just looking for movement into the number we're not looking to hold over the number so we want to make sure that we buy that spread back in before the earnings release the other one on the list was COST I like this I like this one I wish it had a little bit better oomph today which it didn't but here's what I like you see this horizontal resistance level here see that massive breakout on big volume it's had good relative strength until recently it got a little bit ahead of itself here 
Now it's pulled back and it's found support and it's tested that breakout. I think it's getting ready to make another run. So here's how I would approach it. That 290, or excuse me, 284 level is one that we would want to use for a bullish put spread. So you would sell the 284 puts by the 283s, by the 282s. You determine how far you want to have your strike prices apart. It announces uh, in the next two weeks, but I think I looked at this a couple days ago, and as I recall, it was like uh, first week of October, so somewhere around maybe October 3rd or 4th, something in that range. So no problem. You could sell you know, the options that expire that Friday, even with earnings coming up, with the idea that it's going to grind, grind, grind a little bit higher and higher. So I like this one. That's a really, de really decent bullish put spread I think you can take advantage of. Now, here's the other side to it. If it can get through this level right here, which that was the high from yesterday, really backed off hard with the market selling off. You can also see a couple of little resistance levels right in here. If it can get above that, I would consider buying calls on a very short-term basis. Make sure you get out of this before earnings. We know that we have probability on our side, but we certainly don't have the market on our side. It's chopping back and forth. So not a lot going on with the market. Let's say that the unexpected happens and the market decides to sell off and it breaks down below that 294 level. Well, by golly, we better have at least a bearish trade in mind. So let's see what we've got on Pop Bear. That might be our easiest, lowest hanging fruit. AABA, not interested in that. This is PNC, PINC, excuse me. That is a big breakdown right there. I don't know that I'd want to chase that. I'm going to zero out. I don't know the company, don't know the option liquidity on that one, but that's a pretty nasty drop. And I'm just looking through all these symbols to see if there's anything with decent option liquidity. Not seeing a whole lot. So I'm going to go back here. Let's see if we can find something. This will be easy. So let me back up for a second. When the market is up, it's easy for us to spot relative weakness because stocks that are down are weak relative to the market. Market was go, go, go up, up, up today. Well, if there's a stock that's down, if there's a stock that was below the prior day low, whoa, that says something. That stock is really weak. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got a whole bunch of them. Okay, so now we can look through this list and we got a lot to pick from. I don't want to knock through a list like that, and you probably don't want to either. BYND, uh, ABBV, ABGO, those kind of, I know they've got decent options. You've got some pharma in here, Lily, J&J, 3M. So let's go in and see if we can narrow this. Go with a bearish trade signal, and that narrowed it down considerably. And uh, weakness versus the SPY on a daily basis. Notice I'm sticking with the D1 column because we're looking for day trades. Okay, this should be workable. If I see something that doesn't have good option liquidity, I'll just skip over it. But let's see what we've got. we got to find one bearish pick this week. See, this is nice. I like this. Autodesk cannot get through these major moving averages. Today, market up stock down lower than the prior day low that's why we search for it bearish here i think it, it's going to be easy for us to find bearish stocks given the market action yesterday i just have a feeling we're going to be able to find quite a few of them uh nothing too exciting there just backing off of its high here we had a nice breakdown stock tried to rally but could not get through it's choppy though. This is AVGO. So yes, probably a, a good bearish pick. Possibly bearish call spread in here. Yeah, I could see doing that above the 100 day moving average for sure. I think that would be a good candidate. That train left the station. Choppy, no, not really that interested there. Here we've got a nice breakdown. 
Ooh, BYND, look out. Look out, we're testing that horizontal support. We've got some relative weakness in here. I think BYND could be one to watch. And no, I have not tried their hamburgers or their, their meat. I've heard it's very good, though. Here we've got a breakout, and we are breaking below that horizontal support. Used to be resistance, now it's support. Not enough for me to want to take a position in it, but I would definitely watch that, and if it breaks below that, I'd like to know about it. That would be a failed breakout. eBay, ooh, choppy though. This is a range-bound stock, and it's barely out of the range, so the fact that it's below the 100-day moving average really doesn't get me that excited about it, so no thanks. eBay hasn't really done much of anything to excite. This is not a bad little breakdown here through the 50-day, comes up, tests the 100-day, now it's seeing steady selling. Choppy, choppy. This stock I almost like from a bullish perspective, only because if this breakout holds and it starts to go back up, it'll be a good bullish put spread candidate. So it's broken out. I'm going to go back to it one second. This is a nice breakout. Okay, that's a big gap higher on earnings. The stock is going to test and test this level. And it's been able to hold up well, even in a weak market. So this is just a little bit of a pullback. I think the stock's going to find support here. I think it's going to be a really decent bullish play once it rests at this level. So I think this is going to be a good bullish put spread. This is actually pretty nice. MMM, very weak. Got a downtrend here. You see the downtrend line? Below the 100-day, below the 50-day, MMM. And then we'll set up our game plan based on the market. Market first, market first, market first. Everything starts with the market. Never lose sight of that. Rig, same deal. Rallies up above the 100-day moving average. Pulls back. Relative weakness. Can't hold the major moving averages. That's probably going to go down. It's an energy stock. So we get all this big blip, this big rally on the Saudi Arabian oil fields being blown up. They're probably going to be coming back online soon, so these stocks that got a temporary lift are now starting to pull back. I think they're all pretty decent shorts, personally. UNH coming down, testing that major horizontal support level. Work, uh, that's a bullish hammer, but it's trying to hang in there. That's a pretty weak-looking stock. I'm going to go back to a couple of these oil stocks because we can put one in. I think we can go with SLB. All right. Gosh, we've got a lot of picks to weed through this week. Didn't want to give you that many. Just from a time standpoint, I could give you dozens and dozens and dozens. I just don't want to have to have you sift through them. By the way, there's my tag list. I only put one symbol in it, but every time I see a chart I like, I just hit the plus sign and it'll add it to this list and then it'll zero out tomorrow. So I forgot all about letter I. I'm going to write that down. Let's create our list. We have a mixed bag. And today is set 25. So on our bullish list, we had I. APH, LRCX, LPX, ATVI, GOOG, and STX. On our bearish list, we had ADSK, we had BYND, we had MMM, and SLB. All right. Now we're going to save and close, and we'll start with this list next week, and I'll be able to show you how these stocks did, but we have to start with the market. That is everything right now. So our critical level this week is this 296 level right in here.
Actually, that's 297. 296 is right there, and that's the one that I would prefer to use. 296 is that low right there. That should be support, and you can see how we opened right at that level today, and we closed right at that level yesterday. So it's significant to me. It's just above the 50-day moving average. So if we are below this level, and definitely if we close below the 50-day moving average, we're below this horizontal support level then you definitely want to be looking at your short positions. So for ADSK, BYND, MMM, and SLB, the rule is we're not below this, you don't get short. Ideally, we close below this and you can hang on to it. If we can't get below this, then you've got to start looking for exit strategies and taking profits along the way because it means that we're just chopping around. So we'll go into ADSK real quick, give you what I like there. So, obviously, we want to stay below the 50-day moving average if that SPY level is breached, and that is our stop. BYND, we want to see a breakdown below this horizontal support level right here. We want to see that low taken out right there, which is 136.27. If that low is taken out and we've got the SPY breakdown, we want to get short and we want to use this as our stop. MMM. We want to short it and we want to use that 100 day moving average as our stop. SLB. We want to use that 100 day moving average as our stop. It's better than the 50 day. That was a big drop yesterday but we've got some horizontal resistance off of these candles right there too, which should have been support, and then we test it again. So I'm more comfortable with that 37.50 level as our stop, but it does look pretty weak. In fact, I think the bearish stocks look more attractive on the chart to me than the bullish stocks. All right, Google. Google, we want to see Google through this point. And what about the market? What do we want the market to do? Well, I haven't really covered that. We're really trapped in this range, so we need to be able to get through this opening price at minimum, which is 299.41. Let's call it 299.50. Okay, I'm going to drop an alert right there. We've got to at least be able to get above this before we start taking long positions because we don't have much more upside here, and then we're bumping right up against resistance. So if we get through, maybe we get one, two more decent days, really not much. So we have to be very careful on the long side. But we've got some good stocks. So Google needs to break out to a new high, and we need to get above this level with the market. If the market gets through here, I think Google will make that high. So now we'll take a look at LRCX, and it's probably going to be a similar situation. Yeah, we want to see it continue to break out of this level. That's our stop right there. That level right there is our stop. I'll drop the alert line so you can see it. That would be our stop. So stock makes a new high, market makes, you know, gets above that resistance level. This becomes our stop. LPX. Want that to hold right there. Not crazy about LPX. We could even, let's scratch LPX. I'm going to remove this one. It just, I mean, it's, it's a paper company. It just doesn't, doesn't do much. So we're going to avoid that one. We'll go to STX. Here, we need to have it above this level right here, which was that high from there. And that high was 5340. It needs to be above 5340 with the S&P breaking out above that level. And ATVI was the last one on our bullish list. And here, we've already got a nice little breakout here. I think you could buy ATVI now. I think you could actually sell a bullish put spread right here. I like this stock. I like the price action of it. I think it's going to move higher. So ATVI, uh, if you're an aggressive trader, a nimble trader, and the market opened higher tomorrow, I think you can get an ATVI and make a little bit of money as it climbs higher, at very least sell a bullish put spread. But this is our stop. 
we want that to hold that low right there must hold so if you sell a bullish put spread use that 5350 level that's it we've got a bunch of stocks it doesn't take that long to find these and to devise a game plan it takes a lot longer for me to describe them but I also wanted to show you a variety of different searches so that you get a little bit more familiar with the different capabilities of the custom search engine it's incredible it'll find anything if you spend 10 minutes a night on it, you'd be amazed at the different stocks that you can find. Thank you. Have a good week. We'll be taking a look at these winners a week from now. Have a good night.